I'm William Bird, I'm Director of Media Monitoring Africa, it's an NGO based in Johannesburg, South Africa. And William, you're doing a rollout of a Wi-Fi uh, piece of software called mm. Commotion. What yes. is Commotion? Commotion, as I understand it, is it's, it's an open, open source piece of software that allows you to build a mesh network. What we've done is we've taken that to see how we can get a community to start to communicate essentially for free. So at the moment, some of our biggest challenges in South Africa are around the high cost of data. So you'll find that a lot of people have access to mobile phones through which they access the internet, but they, in the communities we're working with, they can afford between two and four dollars a month on data, which means that they really often, by the end of the month, they run out of data and they can't do the kinds of things that they want to and need to do. So what we're doing with our platform is, is we're using the commotion technology to help set up mesh network. And then we've added to that a, a, a client, a Jabber client, so that, that allows people to communicate. And we've made it look so it's very similar to the way that WhatsApp uh, operates. So you can send a message to your friend or you can send a message to a group of people. Um, and the start of it has been quite successful in terms of just being able to get people to communicate and do file sharing. Mm. What we've also then introduced is a, is a bit of a community landing page where people can put up community adverts or notifications. Yeah. And so we're working with a, an early childhood development group and what they're doing is, is they're able to put up information on this locally hosted website. Yeah. Where, where have, you, have you been rolling out geographically? So there's a community, with, uh, it's our pilot in a community in Villa Lisa which is in uh, the East Rand in Johannesburg. So it's not a, a deeply impoverished community or something, but it certainly isn't a community that has access to all the kinds of resources that you would want and need. And so our, our basic entry point, which is still a barrier, and we recognize that, is that people need some kind of a the phone or device that has uh, got some level of Wi-Fi on it. What we found in this community is, is that most people, in fact, do have that. Uh, so that's 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 quite a useful sort of entry point, and as we know, those the, you know most uh, smartphones and the prices are getting cheaper and cheaper. Mm. So you can now get a phone for around uh, sixty dollars. That's mm. that's you know touch screen that can do just about all the things that a that a regular and a higher grade smartphone can. And the access is free on this yep. network. So what we're wanting to do is is to make sure that people can, if they can see the Wi-Fi, they can get onto it and they can start to chat and they can start to use certain things. We've whitelisted certain sites, so sites that people in the area need or want based on our engagement with the Early Childhood Centre, so things like uh, birth certificate registrations, you can go to the various government websites and look that kind of thing up. Um, and people, once they're on it, they can use it as much as they want, they can chat as much as they like and it costs them literally nothing except for the electricity of their phone, obviously. But yeah. So unlike a lot of these free Wi-Fi things, this genuinely is free. And for us, it's about making sure that this community has a sense of ownership of this thing. So they run it, and it's based out of one of the early uh, childhood centers. They run it. We've been working with some of their people there to show them how to do basic maintenance, add users, you know, just do, do certain kinds of things, because it's something that we want them to say, this is our Wi-Fi, this is our community, and they should be able to determine access to that. And once you've got one going, <coughs> is the intention to, to run many more or simply have that as a kind of model? For so, what we've, so what we're doing is, is what we've already been finding is that this is a nice idea for a, a widespread community. So at the moment we've got uh, about a, a one and a half a square kilometre footprint and our, not, our next use case is actually we're going to try and work it in a school which we'll be trying to implement towards the end of, uh, before the end of July. And this is the one in Hilborough? Yeah. So this is an inner city school that is uh, in, the, in the middle of Hillbrow, which is by no means an under-resourced area to the extent that there's no mobile signal or that you mm. couldn't get uh, data there if you wanted to. It's just that the people there don't have access. There's no computer lab in the school. Mm. So you're, you know, you're talking about students that are in an inner city facility that are being set back by years. Because you were describing to me last night about mm. how the work you do. Describe the work you do and, and what happens okay. now and how that will change. So one of the things that we do is, is we work with young people and we give them skills to operate as journalists. So they, they're trained as journalists, they get a press card and they report on mainstream media issues. And that's important for us because we're trying to make sure that if young people are going to be taken seriously, they need to be shown that they can take other issues seriously and that they can bring a fresh and different perspective. 
So we work with these, uh, some of these kids of 15, 16, uh, and they will write pieces on whatever issue of the day. Some of them have written on um, sex education. They write on topics that are, are, are difficult often for adults to discuss. And then we take those pieces and we get them placed in national media. Mm. So it works very well as a model. The trouble with what we've got now is, is that this school, even though it's smack bang in the center of Johannesburg, mm. they don't have a computer lab. The children don't have laptops. So yeah. my colleague goes there, they discuss their story ideas, they pitch them to my mm. colleague who's the editor, and then he says, okay, go work on it. They work on the story, he goes back there, he collects the story which they've had to write on a piece of paper. He mm. then takes it back to our office to edit it, to make changes, takes it back, discusses those with them, and then they can do a final version, which he then brings back to our office and then writes up mm. and we then submit. So that, I mean, it's an extraordinarily archaic idea that that's the way you have to operate, especially yeah. because we've built a tool specifically for our children to be able to, if they've got access to a laptop, they can just type it up on screen. The moment mm. they click submit, my editor gets a, an email and a notification saying mm. there's a story. Yeah. He can then go online, edit it and say, thanks, click. And the child, if they were still there, like an yeah. hour later, they could come back and check it and you could do what literally now takes days in two hours, you know? So why did you choose commotion? What was the attraction of that technology? So there were a few things. I think that firstly, having done, I mean, I met uh, Sasha, who's, mm. uh, who seems so an Sasha Minor, yeah. Think, yeah. I mean, he seems an extraordinary guy and he was talking about this and he introduced me to a lot of these ideas. We did a bit of research on, on some of the, the alternatives. And so the thing that I like about it is, of course, that it's open source because we do a lot of open source uh, tech ourselves and development. So it needed to be open source and that it was free. But I also really liked the idea that it's a mesh network. And I know there's other stuff software for this, but this seemed to meet our needs in terms of offering a low cost Easy, easy to install solution because the thing that we wanted to do was there's lots of big Wi-Fi networks out mm. there already but in order to install those and play on them you need a really high level of uh, tech, technical, technical competence. competence and expertise yeah. you know and if you're talking about a community where you've got a, a skills divergence so some people there they don't have this they don't know what the internet is they don't know what Wi-Fi is mm. they know what Facebook is they don't know that it might be part of the internet mm. And then you've got people on the other side who, you know, live, might live almost in the same family mm. who've got brilliant expertise. They know how these things work and they just need an opportunity to start to learn a bit and then yeah. they can do it. So Commotion gave us an entry point where we said, okay, we want something that you switch it on and the network's going to come up. Because if it's in a community that's a 40 minute drive, you can't go there and, mm. and do this, you know. So it, it was about the fact that it was something that we could build a, a very simple easy to operate system. So we've got these little nodes and then we've got a few Raspberry Pis mm. and a modem. You know, and we there's a few basic, basic steps, are. but once you set it up, it's up and it's running and it's stable. And yeah. you know, if the so power goes off, quite cheap. and that's the other key element, yeah. right? So commotion, open source, effective software that's mm. tried and tested. Uh, and it's something that we also like the idea that you can expand mm. it, you know. And critically for us is that it's not it, it's not dependent on some larger entity to come and install it's something that people in that community can have control over do for themselves yeah